Hey guys, it's your boy Swag for Life, and thank you for joining me today. Um, as always, I like to ask you that if you would, please hit the like button if you like what I have to say. Also, if you're not a subscriber, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It would really mean a lot to me. Um, I'm probably not going to be doing a lot of laughing. I'm probably not going to be doing a lot of jokes today because today is a different kind of video. Um, as you know, we um, got a verdict in the Derek Chauvin trial, and he was found guilty on all three counts. Guilty of second-degree murder, guilty of third-degree murder, and guilty of second-degree manslaughter. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I was on pins and needles for these last few weeks. Um, I felt like the prosecution did a great job in, um, you know, putting out witness after witness after witness, expert testimony. Um, you know, they really did a stand up job and I greatly appreciate it. But I'm not celebrating tonight. Um, there's nothing to really celebrate. Um, I mean, Yes, we got the verdict that I think most of America wanted. Um, you know, we'll see what happens next uh, as far as his trials or as far as his sentencing is concerned. Um, and of course, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of appeals. And I'm sure a lot of us um, are aware of the fact that the defense is going to be trying to pin this all on Maxine Waters because of the comments that she made. Um, but. I'm not celebrating tonight. I'm, you know, I'm not jumping up for joy. I'm not, you know, posting on social media that, yay, we did it. This is so exciting. This is great. I'm so happy because I'm not happy. It's exhausting. This whole process has been exhausting. Matter of fact, I posted it on Twitter. I said we basically had to watch, the world had to watch a cop kneel on a man's neck, a black man's neck, for nine minutes, over nine minutes. We had to endure a three-week trial. We had to wait months for that tri trial to even come to pass. Had to wait months for that trial. Had to wait weeks and go through weeks of testimony with over 30 witnesses to finally get somebody to admit that Derek Chauvin killed George Floyd. And I'm going to be honest with you, this shit is exhausting. It's exhausting that not even before the trial had ended, we witnessed another unarmed black man murdered by the police. And then we had to watch a 13-year-old kid get murdered by the police. And, you know, I know that during the pandemic, there seemed to be this calm across America as far as like shootings and stuff but as we get closer and closer to the end of the pandemic it's like there's a mass murdering there's all this stuff that's going on in the world and it's like God do we really want things back to normal because this is our normal this is what's normal for us is daily hearing about somebody getting shot by the police, somebody getting murdered by the police, some guy with an AK-47 running into a place of employment or to a restaurant or to a school and just shooting up innocent people. And that shit is exhausting. So no, I'm not celebrating. Again, yes, I'm glad for the verdict. I'm glad that, you know, George Floyd, you know, had some semblance of justice, but there's so many other people who didn't have this, who didn't have their day in court, and who may never get the justice that they deserve. So, yeah, I'm not celebrating because this is life in America. This is what we have to endure on a regular basis. And it's just exhausting and I'm tired. I'm tired of, you know, when they, when, when I, it was so, so funny. I was actually exercising today. I was, um, I was on my bike and as soon as I saw that there was a verdict, 
you know, I wanted to stop. I, I did finish my, I did finish my workout some. I did go ahead and finish because I didn't realize how long it was going to take for them to actually announce the verdict when I got a notification on my phone that they had done so. But, you know, I finished my workout and then I just stopped and I was glued to the TV. But honestly, I had this pit, this feeling of dread in the pit of my stomach saying, he's going to get off. He's going to get off. He's going to walk. And we're just not going to get the justice that we're looking for in this case. I just, I just felt it, you know, and it's funny because I, I heard people, a lot of, a lot of media commentary was asking prosecutors like, well, you know, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? And of course, nobody really knew what was going to happen. You know, we, we hoped and we prayed that, you know, we would get a guilty verdict, but nobody really knows these things. Only the 12 people in the jury knew what the outcome of this thing was going to be. So, you know, only they knew how this thing was going to turn out. And we have seen that, or what I've heard is that usually when there's a quick turnaround with the jury, that's usually a good sign for the defense. Um, so I have to admit, I was really worried. I thought, oh my God, not again. We're going to watch this guy walk again. And it just, it bothered me. I, I, I got sick to my stomach. I, I, I really had to just take a moment and I paused and I just closed my eyes and I just waited to hear what they said. And I'm telling you, when I heard that first guilty, it was a sort of a sigh of relief, but then it was like, okay, well, that's just one. What about the other two? And then when I heard guilty again, I was like, okay, are we going to get all three? And when that third verdict of guilty came over, I'm telling you, man, I wanted to cry because I just couldn't believe what I had just heard. I was on the phone with my family. You know, I had let them know, like, I hope you're all watching. I hope you all are, are, are witnessing this moment right now. And they all got on and, you know, we, you know, we said, you know, thank God, thank God, you know, you know, now. But, but the thing is, we, we're not done. We're, this is not over. This is not over by a long shot because you know, we're going to have to go through this stuff again and again and again and again. And, you know, the next trial that comes up, I, I think I heard that the next trial that may come up would be for Ahmaud Aubrey. Who knows how that's going to turn out? You know, is is what did what happened to George Floyd going to affect this trial? Are they going to try to is the defense going to try to use what happened in the George Floyd and the I'm sorry, the Derek Chauvin trial to try to somehow manipulate you know, the Ahmaud Aubrey trial, who knows? But it's just that this is exhausting to continuously see people of color being murdered by police officers and, and whatnot, you know, just for simply existing, you know. Now, granted, Joy Floyd was no saint. He didn't deserve to die, you know. And, and I've noticed a lot on social media and stuff, that a lot of people were saying like, well, did you know that he did this? And did you know that he did that? Did you know, did you know, did you know? What difference does that make? You know, we're supposed, we in, here in America, we always say that, you know, if you do the crime, you got to do the time. He paid his cost. He did whatever sentences he was served. He was free to do whatever he didn't want to do. So, you know, I always get upset when I hear people say, you know, well, he had a criminal past. So my my response usually to that is, OK, so once a criminal, always a criminal, I guess, in your eyes. So why do we have people serve time in prison? Because, you know, prison and jail is supposed to rehabilitate. You know, we tell people, OK, you, you committed a crime. You know, we're going to sentence you for this many, many months or years or what have you. And then, you know, once you serve your time, you know, you, you paid your cost to society, but society doesn't let you live as a free person. They always are going to come back with, you know, excuses about, well, you know, he did this and he did that. And so, you know, he wasn't a good guy. You know, I remember, you know, Candace Owen getting on some program or on the Internet or whatever and saying that, you know, the black community, 
you know, needs a better way to choose their martyrs. He wasn't a martyr and we didn't choose him. Derek Chauvin did. Derek Chauvin did what he did. You know, had Derek Chauvin not killed him, he would have best been another guy that got arrested and, you know, whatnot. But Derek Chauvin picked George Floyd for us. He picked him. Black folk didn't have anything to do with that. That was all on him. So we didn't pick him. And again, just because he has a criminal past does not mean that he immediately gets to die for that. And it, or that if he does die in custody, that, oh, well, he wasn't a good guy. So he gets what he gets. That's not the way the justice system would work. And time and time again, we have seen black men, black women, you know, found innocent, you know, later on in life or, or later on in, in years, you know, they find new evidence or they find or they do DNA tests and things like that. Uh, let's not forget the Central Park Five. Let's not forget that. So, you know, yes, you know, black people get convicted of crimes. But they're not always the ones who are guilty of those crimes. They just get convicted. So, you know, I, I, I say that to say that just because somebody gets arrested, somebody, just because somebody has done some bad things in their past does not immediately mean that if they die, then their life was worthless. And, and that's just it. If, if that's the case, then there's going to be a lot of people, uh, in DC right now, Matt Gates included. Who, you know, if, if that's your reasoning for, well, if you do a crime, then you, you don't deserve to live, then, you know, put him on that list too. You know, all the people in, on January 6th who caused that, um, insurrection, put them on that list. But you're not going to do that because they don't look like you. And that's the problem with America is that, you know, we're so quick to p paint this ugly picture of people who look like me, that we're dangerous, that we're a menace to society, that, you know, we're, 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 we're always up to no good. And, you know, we're going to, you know, we're always just going to be a problem in this society. And that's just not the case. So again, glad that the verdict came down the way that it did, but now's not the time to celebrate. Now's the time to reflect um now is the time to um, work on the next case that's coming down and now's the time to start you know we need to really start having conversations in this country about what it means to be racially profiled what it means to have innocent black men and women um killed by police and it's time for us to rethink how maybe the police works in this country because it's not working. You know, when a, a, when a kid who got scared, you know, I, I made a TikTok about this the other day and I said, you know, America's so willing to look past an officer who's had 26 years in the force making a mistake of pulling her gun instead of her taser and killing somebody but then they didn't want to offer that same forgiveness to a kid who got scared because he was surrounded by police over an expired tag and an air freshener. You know, somebody shouldn't die because they've had expired tags. I've had expired tags. Does that mean I should die for it? No. And neither did he. You know, if he had a warrant out for his arrest, he should be, you know, they should have, they should have been able to handcuff him and take him down to wherever, you know, take him down to jail, or whatever, and wait for him to, you know, uh, answer for the warrant. But he shouldn't die over it. And yeah, he's, he's a 20 year old kid. He got scared. He got scared. I get that. I get scared. I get scared. I literally get scared now when I see a police officer. I get scared. I, you know, I went to the grocery store the other day and I saw a cop and I literally got scared because I don't want to be that next statistic. I don't want to be the next hashtag. I don't want to be the next meme because some officers decided that he's, you know, having a bad day 
or, you know, decides that, well, you know what? I don't like this guy. I'm going to, you know, give him a hard time or whatever. For what? For what? So, um, that's all I wanted to really say. I, you know, I, 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 I wanted to document this time. I wanted to put this, um, you know, out on the internet because, I mean, that's just how I'm feeling right now. And again, I'm not celebrating. I'm, I'm glad the verdict happened the way that it did, but now's the time to be even more vigilant, to continue to fight for, um, injustice, to continue to fight for, um, just, just a reduction of police brutality. You know, I don't think black people are asking for a lot. We're not asking that we just be able to commit crimes nearly really and the police never touch us. You know, if we're, if we're in the wrong, we're in the wrong, but just treat us like humans because we are human and we deserve our day in court. If, if we commit a crime and, you know, we're guilty of it, but we deserve our day in court. But, you know, this killing, you know, another murder here and there has got to stop and it needs to stop now. And hopefully this will be the start of that conversation. Hopefully this will be the start of the end of the way that the police have been able to treat black Americans in this country. And we can work toward a better society for everybody. But anyway, I thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate you listening to me uh, talk this out. And um, I will see you in the next video. So have a good one.